One of the key aspects to understanding the working practice and inclination of Vanessa and Duncan is beautifully exemplified by this linen chest. It expresses better than a lot of the other objects around in the house and that survive, just how well they blurred the boundaries between art, aesthetics, high art, and objects, everyday domestic things that you had around you. They collided with each other. And the apotheosis of that was the Omega workshops from 1913 for the next few years that with Vanessa, Duncan, and Roger Fry, together with a band of other artists, they continued to produce wonderful objects from painted objects like this. It's difficult to know where to start. It's something you've got to sort of walk around, but the front, I suppose, the lid is open, but the front is probably the defining image. And this is classic Duncan, uh, a homoerotic nude. It looks like a swimmer, but just look how from the left-hand side to the top right in that stretching male torso, fragmented with, with cubist colouring, in that marvellously dense way, he just fills your eye. And then if you follow the arms around here, you're rewarded by a cubist still life. Looks like a few objects that might be hanging around on the artist's table. And then let's move around. We've got these rather thrilling roundels, each with different colours, shapes, dynamic, eye-catching, surrounded by those straight lines. But Duncan, for all of his enthusiasms and proclivities, liked to be balanced in his art. And if you lift up the lid, as it has been here, you can see that you've got mirroring the male form at the front, a female one. And this is a modernist adaption of the classical subject of Leda and the Swan. There is also humour. And instead of a swan, he's popped in a duck, quite likely from the pond in front of the house. It looks like a male mallard. From the moment they got there, they painted pretty well everything, not just linen chests, anything that moved, anything that didn't move. The wainscoting, the ceilings, the sideboards. And it was through that and by doing that in that tireless, regenerative way that defines Charleston as this extraordinary living and breathing house throughout the 20th century. This ever regenerative source of art, which through their eyes, with their hands, with their brushes, they've captured. And I hope we have, to a degree, in this exhibition.